You've heard all about Wirecast on episode 175. Now, try your hand at internet broadcasting with the incredible live broadcasting suite from Telestream. Visit cat5.tv slash Wirecast and give the free trial version of Wirecast a spin. Find out how it works on your system, start your own broadcast, record your show to disc, and have fun. When you're ready, Telestream and Category 5 TV would like to give you a whopping 25% off the price to purchase Wirecast. Between now and February 13th, enter the coupon code CAT5TV during checkout, and you'll receive an automatic 25% discount on your purchase of any Telestream product. Visit cat5.tv slash Wirecast today, and remember to use the coupon code CAT5TV. Wirecast from Telestream. Get it now at cat5.tv slash Wirecast. Welcome to episode number 176 of Category 5 Technology TV. I'm Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Eric Kidd. And over there. I'm Hillary Rumble. Surprise! She looks up at the monitor. I know, I was like, you, am I on? See that? Ooh, okay. I don't know if oh, I'm on. That's, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. Thank cool you. beans herself. <laughs> wow. In the fun. What a night. You know it hasn't even started yet. It hasn't Here even we are. started, and, and I'm wondering, my goodness, am I going to make it all the way out to the Guthrie Arena in this snowstorm that's coming? But it's hard to say. We'll find yeah, out. Yeah, that's what they're calling for, too, isn't it? You know, but Toronto's going to get hit so hard, they're going to call in the Army again, I bet, Robbie. Is, is that the plan? <laughs> There's a good 30 centimeters coming, but nothing like Chicago. Apparently, they are just getting hammered. Um, ask Reckon. W-R-E-K-E-N. He's in the chat room. Apparently it's snowing in Chicago. Yeah? yeah. yeah. <laughs> or is that Chicago? <laughs> Welcome to the show, everybody. You'll find us online, Category5.tv. We'd love to have you in the chat room there. Uh, tonight, we've got a lot going on. We have your chance to win a free copy of Wirecast. You saw the coupon promo off the top there. Uh, but we also have a free copy that we're going to be giving away uh, in one month uh, time. So stick around. You're going to find out how you can qualify for that. And uh, that's very, very cool stuff. Also tonight, we're going to be taking a look at how to become a blogger for free. All right. We didn't see you last week. I was doing something. I, yeah. I have no idea what well, I was doing. Well, Hillary was here. I must have been having fun, though. I yeah. don't remember where I was. I, I was saying, <laughs> what a mad <laughs> night. Now, I have a, a very limited window before each episode of Category 5 goes live. And this is a live broadcast uh, from Ontario, Canada. And... Uh, when we go live, belt, I might add. in the snow belt, so yeah. people are, uh, you know, John's trying to find a parking spot because all the parking spots are filled with snow, you know, that that have been shoveled there by the by the plows kind of thing. Um, but tonight, once again, I don't know if you read the forums at Category Five TV, but do check it out. The viewer forums on the interact menu. Uh, but we had another big issue trying to get the uh, the new HD camera to initialize tonight. Spent some time on the phone with uh, with Black Magic. They're the manufacturers of the HDMI capture device that we use, uh -huh. and he ruled it out and said it's got to be the cable. It's got to be that HDMI cable that I had to order all the way from New York. Darn. Ouch. So, Was that the DVD good news. Now, so, the, so the bad news is <laughs> is that 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 meant like two hours of lost time tonight for getting ready for the show. But we're here. We're on time, and uh, and that's fabulous. But. The, uh, the camera, what I ended up having to do was go out through analog. So we're using the HD camera, but we are not in true HD tonight. Well, I've already had somebody in the chat room telling us it looks good. It looks, it looks better, sure. It, it, it looks better than the old SD look cameras. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but once we replace that, uh, that defective or faulty HDMI cable, uh, you're going to see that the quality is going to go even higher. So that'll be, uh, that'll be really nice. 
Somebody was suggesting the white balance might be off, but apparently geeks are always a little pale. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This That's, is the closest thing to sunshine is, I've had all year. This is a tough crowd we're dealing with tonight. <laughs> <laughs> tough house. Yeah. So, uh, Hillary, you got some stuff coming up. Uh, I'll let you kind of take over for a moment. Sure thing. So I sip my coffee. <laughs> well, coming up in the newsroom, guys, Kindle books are outselling paperbacks. A new cross-distro package manager could be coming to Linux. Microsoft refund policies could land them in court. And the cost of your internet connection in Canada is about to go up. But some are fighting. So stick around for the latest news from the Category 5.TV newsroom. Hmm. Ooh. Thanks, Hill. No problem. So uh, join us in the chat room, Category5.TV. We'd love to get your questions. Eric's uh, kind of keeping an eye on that. You've probably got some email and I things like that that do. we can take a look at. I didn't get a sip of my coffee yet. Oh, hey, take a sip of your coffee, everybody. <laughs> Have a sip of your coffee. Eric, no, we're not moving on. We're not continuing on okay. with the show until you've had a sip of your coffee, and I'll do the same. And I can tell everyone about the marvelous comments I've been reading on the website. I need my coffee hand to change cameras. Oh. There. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just thought, while well, everyone's taking a coffee break, I can tell you all about the wonderful things that people are posting on our website. Now, if you have some feedback for us, some, some positive insight, we would love to hear from you. You can do that by visiting our website, uh, cat5 dot, uh, cat5.tv. What Category5.tv will right. get you there. That's true. It, it <laughs> throws you off because we, I, I'm telling her before the show, like, we've the got hashtag, a new hashtag. hashtag. Our hashtag on Twitter used to be Category5, <laughs> but people have been abusing it, so we've oh, changed it to Cat5TV. That's what I mean. So, so visit now the, she's all confused about the Visit the, the correct website. Yes. Not the hashtag, which I was thinking of, for Twitter. But you can also follow Robbie, myself, and Eric on Twitter, just saying. Anyways, back to the website. Send us a testimonial by clicking interact and uh, let us know what you think. And speaking of testimonials, here is one right here coming to us from Jeremy V from Kentucky. Watch the show uh, off and on since 2009 when I started playing with various USB Linux distros. Miro is one of the media packages that uh, rivaled iTunes. While I'm still a PC guy, your show and my netbook with Mint usually show me something cool each time I watch. Got another one here from Dino from San Diego, California, saying, Robbie, I've been watching your show since you showed how to upgrade to Jaunty Jackalope, episode 85, I think. The Jackalope. Jackalope. <laughs> I don't even know what that is, but it sounds cool. Really? I don't know what a Jackalope well, is. That was one of the funniest videos yeah. I remember. The Jackalope. Jaunty Jackalope is, is uh, a distribution, a version of, of Ubuntu that oh. came out a while ago, but Jackalope is, is like a creature. I don't know how you. How okay, you I thought it was. It's I thought it was like a mythical a, kind of creature. A a and a and yeah, and yeah, yeah, that's that's right. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, okay, I thought it was like a, a mythical <laughs> creature, but then I, I didn't know what it was. Hillary, in the world of tech. <laughs> we can completely mess with her right now. You can't because I don't know what I'm watching. Jackalopes have little tiny wings. Four of them actually. Four little stop, wings. Stop, guys. Stop. Just stop telling me lies. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm here. Ah. Okay, anyways, Jaunty Jackalope, episode 85. I was amazed that you did that show all by yourself. I was more amazed when Carrie got back. I've had a portable computer since 1980, and I, I saw something in my periphery. <laughs> <laughs> carry on, carry on. I can't on. even read. That was before the <laughs> IBM PC. I've been using Linux since Red Hat 5.2. Still, I learned a lot from your show. You taught me about VirtualBox. Because of your show, I bought a brother uh, MF MFC 6490CW and a couple of pogo plugs. These are great devices and work perfect with Linux. I would never discovered I wouldn't have discovered these products had it not been for your show. So keep up the good work, from Dino. Thanks, Dino. That's really cool to hear that uh, mm -hmm. that you invested in products that we've suggested on the show and then found that hey, these recommendations that they made on Category Five are actually great products. So. Make sure uh, if you do something like that, if you purchase a product like a Pogo plug or, or a Brother printer and you saw it here, make sure you tell them that, uh, that you saw it here because that, uh, that they'll love to know that. So. Somebody mentioned Guinness one time and I went and bought one right away and I was pleased with the product. Oh, sorry, no, I digress. <laughs> what else is I new? Digress. What else is new? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ron had a, well, it's not really a question. He's just... Uh, oh, well, he, you still have more, don't you, Hill? I oh, do, yeah, but well, we look can at, save them. We can savor. Trying to just hop in there. I took a week off. 
<laughs> All right, well, I'll just finish up quickly with our lovely testimonials. Um, this comes to us from Jemmy Seagal. Uh, hey, Robbie and crew. I was really surprised to see my question get aired so quickly regarding my motherboard recommendations. Mm. I got great feedback from the chat room, too. Bonus to Eric for properly pronouncing my name. I have friends of 20 plus years who still can't get it right. Great job. I hope I said it right. Jemmy? hope so sorry if i didn't um got another one here from dennis kelly um robbie and gang just wanted to write and say how much you have helped me learn about ubuntu and computers in general i'm new to linux only about two years of playing around and i love it i have migrated most of my computers to linux and i'm actually running free nas also thank you for all your insight and wonderful help robbie you are very patient with people thank you again from dennis Hillary, come on, hurry up. And lastly, <laughs> ah, hi, Robbie, congratulations is. for the well-done website. I can see improvement in terms of contents uh, to your TV program. Your program is useful for an Ubuntu geek like me to follow up with news and updates. And most importantly, seeing you guys online is interesting, as you always present yourselves with a wide smile. Thank you very much. Keep it up. And this comes to us from Invisible Mutant. Ooh, thank you for writing. Thank you for your comments. Thank back you. to you clowns over there. I don't know what you're oh. doing, but back to you. We're just having a variety. <laughs> I noticed that uh, the people are starting to submit their, their viewer testimonials. They're saying that we've got one here. Dennis said, Robbie and gang. And gang. We're, we are a gang. And then, and then we had, hello, Robbie and crew. Because <laughs> people are catching on to the fact that as soon as they say, hey, Robbie and Eric, that's the week that Hillary will right. come. <laughs> and <laughs> John's seems to be the sitting case. there thinking... Hey, what about me? <laughs> How you yeah, doing, John? Hey, what about me? Please submit your uh, <laughs> testimonials regarding John's camera work. We would like him to get some positive <laughs> feedback, too. As Hillary was saying, uh, get onto our website, category5.tv, and what you do is you head on over to Interact, Viewer Testimonials, and submit your own. And from there, you are actually able to fill in your very own testimonial to be featured on the show. And... If you've got a webcam, you can actually record your video testimonial and submit that to us as well. And, and I'd encourage you to do that because uh, that's a lot of fun. People would love to see that, and uh, I'd love to see that. That'd be very cool. Well, all right. It was so much work to implement that feature, and not a lot of people have utilized it yet. So, hint, hint. Viewer testimonials don't have to be text. Well, okay. <laughs> so, if you can't type, you can at least video. Yes. Okay. Or both. Well, should I read Ron's comment now? Are, sure. are we done over there, Hill? I'm done. Okay. You may have the floor. It's all okay, yours. Well. <clears throat> Ron Dugay. Dugay. Um, hi, Robbie, Eric, and Hillary. So, yeah, there, there you go. Well done, sir. Last week, I sent an email question about not being able to play videos with M Player, VLC, <laughs> or Miro. All I would get is sound. So, I ended up reloading the codex from Synaptic. All good now. Thanks, Ron. Very there cool. So that wasn't really a question, but that was a... Uh, it's good to know how things work out. I know, remember the question, though. Yeah. And I remember mentioning about uh, reinstalling uh, Ubuntu Restricted Extras. Uh, I think that was two weeks right. ago that we talked I, I about was, that. I was here for that. So that's, uh, that's really good that, uh, that that worked for you. So thanks for letting us know. All right. Appreciate that. Okay, and Gatorman has a question. And uh, his OS is Mint 10. I have a computer right. running Lucid Lynx that was a hardware problem that makes it load extremely slow. What diagnostic software should I use to pinpoint the problem? It's a 64-bit AMD quad-core with 6 gigabytes of RAM. Hmm. There you go. There are a lot of different things you can choose from. I think Ultimate Boot CD is the first thing that comes to mind. Yes, it's a chock full of stuff. That's the thing. It's a, it's a free disk that you can download the ISO and you can get the... Uh, the bootable CD that gives you tools to diagnose issues that you may be having with your computer. Here's a screenshot of uh, version 5, where from the menu you select you know, whether you want to check your BIOS, your CPU, your hard drive, your memory, others, peripherals, things like that, and it's got a, just a slew of great tools that are available for you on the Ultimate Boot CD. Uh, UltimateBootCD.com You'll be able to download that. It's uh, just a a vast array that's been assembled uh, by them of uh, open source software that uh, you might want to give that a try to, to get started. Yeah. So. Now is it predominantly a command line once you're in there, isn't it? I, th I think it's, yeah. it's uh, well, no, a lot of times it's 
like you click on the text-based menu, and it will launch the tools that uh, that you've selected. So, a um, good example would be like MemTest. It's, a, it's right. like a, a menu item, and you hit MemTest, and it will bring up the MemTest mem applications. So, handy tool. No operating system necessary. You can just boot from the CD. Okay. Well, we have another one um, from John Crisp. Hey, John. Hi, Robbie and Eric. Well, I'm having quite a problem with Synergy Plus. Hmm. I can't get XP client to work. It installs on the Win 7 box OK, says waiting for client. Upon starting the client box, XP, nothing. Do I need both machines connected to my monitor? XP is VGA and Win 7 is DVI. That's how I have them connected now. But I have to turn one off to access them separately. Totally confused. John and Dallas. Okay, John. Um, could be many different things. First thing, if you could leave that open just because I'm going to refer, there's a few different comments there. Stop. <laughs> I'll try to act like more of an adult in the future. Okay. It could happen. So you've got Windows 7 and Windows XP. Windows 7 has is, is a little bit trickier when it comes to networking and getting your firewall settings uh, configured uh, if you want to be using it as a server. So sometimes that can be a case. If you're using the built-in firewall, try disabling the firewall <coughs> just as a test so that you can see if it's the firewall that is causing the problem. So go into your control panel, your, your firewall settings, disable the firewall entirely, and then uh, and it, try to initialize that connection to Synergy again. If it works, you know it's the firewall, you know that you need to add an exception, you've just saved yourself a whole bunch of time. If it doesn't work, let us know because it might be something else. I presume from the sounds of it you've got general networking set up, you've got your static IP addresses configured, and uh, pardon me, everything's configured on. Pardon me, the uh, the host system, like the, the one that is being uh, served as a server for Synergy, uh, you've got that all set up. So, so first thing I would check, firewall, and uh, if that's the case, add an exception to your Windows firewall for Synergy, and uh, you should be good to go. So, let us know, John. I hope that you're uh, able to get that going. I know you've been wanting to for some time. <coughs> with regards to, do you need to connect the monitors in such a way and stuff? You're, with Synergy, it is two physical computers. So, imagine if you've got two computers side by side, and each computer has its own keyboard and mouse. What Synergy allows you to do is simply take that second computer and unplug the keyboard and mouse and keep working by using just one keyboard and mouse from the host. But each computer has its own monitor. Exactly. So everything else remains the same. So it's, it's just DVI that you're able to take away those two things. Really enter exactly. Into the exactly. There's no having to swap around video cables or change things like that. It's strictly getting rid of that second keyboard and mouse. Two computers side by side, or three, or ten, however you want to do it. How would you do it if there were 10? Especially if you were on a laptop with a little touch thing. Because you'd, you'd have to scroll so far that you'd have to keep picking up your mouse off the mouse pad. Yeah. <laughs> Ran out of table. <laughs> exactly. OK. Oh my goodness. If you have a question for us here at Category 5, join us in the chat room, category5.tv. And Hillary, if we miss anything, uh, feel free to pipe up and say, hey, Chat room's going crazy oh, over here, and you guys. I will. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Appreciate that. So she is your advocate, people, in the chat room, category 5tv or on Freenode. It is category five. I almost did it there too. Almost said cat five. Gets well, confusing. It does. It's all good. All right. Lewis has a question. Hey, Lewis. Um, and uh, also a comment. He's using uh, okay. Ubuntu 10.10. Love the show. Love the fact that your show is showing me how to use Ubuntu and Linux in general. Um, the question is, uh, I was using uh, my system as an HTPC unit with my flat screen and a handheld remote to navigate the mouse. If I hit a key the wrong way, I get kicked back to a DOS-like uh, cursor with my root name and can't get back to the GUI interface. How can I start back up to the GUI from the DOS-like prompt? Thank you and your family for their support on helping others. Thanks. Sure. Um, Louis, well, first of all, I'll just say when, when Eric says GUI or when I say GUI, it's graphical user interface. So when someone says that, they're referring to 
the uh, getting back to the desktop from just a black screen. Sounds to me like it's possible you're changing TTY terminals on the fly. Um, and you can see if that's happening by hitting Control Alt F1, Control Alt F2, and see if that's similar to what you're seeing. Uh, in order to get back to your X environment, that's on Control Alt F7. So if you have a keyboard on there, Control Alt F7 brings you right back to uh, your your main X environment. Um, using uh, the TTY terminals can be extremely handy because you can be doing tasks in the background in another in another environment um, on a different like on Control Alt F1. That's like basically a computer, if you will. It's a it's an environment where you can be running tasks and then go back to Control Alt F7 and you're just back at your desktop doing other stuff and then swap back and forth. So if it's throwing you over to one of those TTY terminals, uh, then you may need to just hit Control Alt F7 to get back and let us know if that's the case. And if it is, then it's uh, you see if the remote that you have, whatever button it is that you're pushing, it must be hitting that uh, that key sequence. So maybe you could disable that so that it, uh, it doesn't switch uh, to a different TTY. So good luck. Let us know, Louis. All right. I'd love to hear from you. I think you should now see us in there. You think it's Lewis? I believe it is. Louis. Louis Lewis. Well. Let us know. Okay. Well, it, I think it's more of a, yeah. It's hard to say. Okay, so we're back here to, uh, <laughs> so we do another question. How did we get on pronunciation tonight, Eric? We're not even halfway through the show and you're already, I'm, already I'm, surprised, he, I'm surprised he's not L-O-U-I-S and underline the S. I that's that's how he usually that. does it. I could have done that. Yeah, all right. I, I've made other comments, but I've decided to leave them. Thank you. Uh, Keep it kind. Keep yes. it kind. I, uh, thanks, guys. <laughs> we miss Just you when you're not into here. This next one. Oh, hey there, Jay. Uh, this is from Jay Spencer. All right. Uh, thanks, guys. Great, as always, and thanks for the idea. Just a second. What was the idea? Did we give you an idea? We want to know about this idea. I actually switched to the new Rogers N router and went up to Extreme, and it is not on my end. I have confirmation from the great service at Pogoplug that is a bug with the app. They are using my situation to resolve it, and I will keep you informed. They have been great. Okay. Actually, you know what? You remember this one? Yeah, this is from the, uh, Wasn't a it an back. iPhone app or something that right. was having some trouble streaming video to? Okay. So you switched um, to Rogers and and still having trouble. So, but good to know that Pogo Plug is on top of it. I always found with Pogo Plug, um, they're very interactive with their community and they're interested in hearing about issues and working with you to resolve them. Um, so that's good to know. And uh, let us know how that goes. Um, glad that they're working with you. So. Any questions right. for us uh, in the chat room? Category five TV. And email. I may have missed a couple. I'm going to have to go back through the logs here. Sure. Uh, Got a couple of minutes before the news, so this is your chance to uh, to get a uh, question into us. People have been trying to help me, and by people I mean Gadwell, um, oh, yeah? how to enlarge the web chat's font because I'm like constantly perma squinting. What are you using over there tonight? I'm what using a Mac Attack. What? MacBook. Dear me. Don't judge. <laughs> so anyways I am in the chat room but I'm like squinting because I can't really see what I'm doing So you heard it here people if you use a MacBook you will squint <laughs> wow Yeah. science doesn't lie listen to the guy who's using the iPod yeah yeah I'm using Touché. the iPod okay it's pretty cool he's actually Expanded his horizons. Sometimes Robbie plays with Windows. He's playing with an Apple product. He's not just a one dimensional Linux geek. He's more than that. I did find the absolute coolest thing. The coolest? In Wooden Labyrinth 3D, though. You really have to check this out. I. I you can just talk amongst yourselves from while I I'm check sure this out. I'm sure there's, out. there's okay. no way that you could get this, John. This is, this is definitely the coolest thing as far as apps go. It's got a nice Spanish guitar. You know what I could do is I could pick it up and put it a little closer to the camera. <laughs> yeah, you know, you could do that. Oh. 
it's it's one of those things. But like, if you shake this thing, the ball jumps and stuff, and, and it actually it's too hard to to do here because I'm having to hold it up in gravity, as 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 I have it. <laughs> right? Okay, you know what it is. You know what it is. It is really the coolest thing. It, it has the sensation that you're actually playing one of those wooden labyrinth games yeah, with the marble. Yeah, pretty cool. But you have to hold it flat. Yeah. Here I am Which doesn't really work camera. well for camera <laughs> shots. No, you got to hold it real flat, and you're doing this. It's really neat. So it's been suggested that uh, Hillary enlarge her Safari's font. Mm-hmm. That's possible. Control plus. Or on the Mac, it is Labyrinth. Command, mm -hmm. oh, right. which no I command. figured <laughs> out on editing. my own. Good job. Ah! Do they have a plus? Yeah. Do they have a plus? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did it. Mm. I'm going to start making noises and see if people think they're cool. Because they always think it's cool when Hillary does it. Because I am cool. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. no getting around it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh. oh, boy. Oh, my goodness. Everybody in the chat room, for those of you who aren't watching live, people just having all these different conversations here. Hey, Gadwell and uh, Agamotto. But... Uh, not a lot of questions coming into the chat room. It's just everybody chatting about this and that with regards to what's going on behind the scenes. So why are you using a MacBook tonight, Hillary, if I may ask? Well, because I'm kind of like in transition between computers, kind of. Like I have an HP laptop, but it's kind okay. of getting old. It's kind of slow. I'm not really running Sounds like me. the best way. <laughs> then last last time I was here, I stole my mom's laptop and was using that. This Mac okay. is not mine. I borrowed this from a friend. So I've just been uh, borrowing computers left, right, and center. Wow. So today it's Mac, and who knows what it'll be next time. So what would it take us, if you've got this old HP that's just really dying on you and it's not running very well, <laughs> What would it take for us to be able to put Linux on that? Um, well, I suppose you could. But what yep. if what if Linux <laughs> could revive it and bring it to a point where wow, this thing is faster than it's ever been? Because it's Windows Vista, right? Um, okay, I you don't folks remember. can't see. Oh, you can see. I don't she looks skeptical. I thought. Well, about I no, I'm not skeptical. I have an Acer. We could do an experiment on that for sure because that's okay. way dead. The, the HP. Oh well, you can't put you can't put Linux on my sort of dead laptop. Well, it's got to be the way dead well, one. Well, then I feel like then I would have all three operating systems. I'd have my Mac right here yes. that I'm borrowing. I'd have my Windows, and then I'd have Linux. Yeah, but you want Windows Vista to be a part of that mix? I don't know. Seriously? I just. It could be worse. It could be Windows ME. It's just difficult because <laughs> I'm always finding myself. Well, it's difficult when you're a student because you are like you have to train yourself across like multi operating Definitely, systems yeah. so like I can do some stuff on my Mac for school but then other stuff like I have to use my I have to use Windows which right. is really complicated so I'm not particularly brand loyal if you will however I do need to I think I need to keep like all three or have all three because I need to be multi versed in each operating right. system and I guess you find that especially when you're working in media that there are going to be Windows apps that you have to be able to use unfortunately yeah so that's just the way the cookie crumbles, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> but yep. uh, I, I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to check it out. Uh, see if we can get a version of Linux that would uh, run well on that system. All right. Do you? Uh, what's What's the? Bring uh, it in and let us play. Come on. Sure. Yeah, bring it in for us. <laughs> All right. There's a an interesting uh, Linux distribution that I'm I'm kind of curious about, and it's called Antix, and it's based on Mepis. And uh, you can actually check it out at antics.mepis.org. And this is one that I'm going to be just kind of playing around with because it is really, really lightweight for older computers. So if you've got an old computer, here's a chance for you to yeah, bring it back to life. Can out of the garage? I, I don't see why not. <laughs> the, minimum, like the system requirements to make this thing work are exceptionally low. Because Linux is, is really, it's a, it's a lightweight operating system. It's, it's all the additional stuff that, that we put on top of it to make it beautiful and give it effects and things that, uh, that really make it heavier weight than it is, right? But uh, that's something we can look at, for sure. Gadwell says 128 meg of RAM, if, is that uh, the if he remembers correctly. 
I'm looking for system requirements there for antics, and I don't see it on that site, but you can check it out anyway, so we'll be looking at it over the next little while. Annoyance says we could do it on a 386. Wow. Find me a 386. <laughs> that still works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So imagine what that would fly like on a quad core. I had a 286 running the teleprompter at the TV station that yeah. I never had to reboot, never had to do anything until... Just worked. Until about December 31st, 1999, <laughs> and all of a sudden, nothing was compatible with Brilliant. the software. I had to re it actually happened. It cost like $100,000 to replace a 286. Oh. It was a sad day. <laughs> and the short, fat IT guy had not budgeted for it. It didn't go well for me. <laughs> <laughs> nothing like live TV where you need to have $100,000 worth of so uh, yeah. hardware just to be able to know what you're supposed to say next. Yeah, exactly. I mean, when we don't know what to say next, we just talk about teleprompters. <laughs> hey, could you hold those cue cards up a little higher, John? <laughs> I guess uh, Hillary is uh, all set with the uh, with the news, and she's sitting over yeah. there going, "Okay, hand it over to me." No, <laughs> I need I need a person or a teleprompter or something because I never know when I'm on. Like, I don't want them to catch me in something crazy over here. <sighs> <laughs> okay, yeah, Eric. So, he's yeah, counting me down in my periphery, I can see. And to the newsroom. <laughs> From the Category 5.TV newsroom, first, Amazon announced that Kindle Books were outselling hardcovers. Now, Kindle Books have outpaced paperbacks. For every 100 paperback books the company has sold this past quarter, they sold 115 Kindle Books. During the same period, they sold three times as many Kindle Books as hardcover books. These numbers only reflect sales in the United States, but it means that ebooks are becoming more mainstream, thanks in part to Amazon's push with the Kindle. The Amazon Kindle store has more than 810,000 books, of which 670,000 are $9.99 or less. $9.99. Uh, in addition to millions of out of copyright titles. Mm -hmm. Installing software on Linux has progressively gotten easier over the years with Ubuntu's application center being called Downright Foolproof by Tom Howerta at osnews.com. However, there is still the problem of each distribution relying on its own front, uh, front ends and back ends. Members from all the major Linux distributions have held several talks and have come up with a solution which is already being implemented. The apps AppStream team think the Ubuntu Software Center is the right user interface, and plans are uh, to port and plans are to port it to PackageKit, a system designed to make software installation easier on Linux systems. Developers from Red Hat, Fedora, Debian, Ubuntu, OpenSUSE, Mandriva, and Magia, I hope I'm saying that right, met recently to talk about creating the universal installer and application store for all these various Linux distributions. And time will tell how this is implemented across the major Linux distros. A class action lawsuit against Microsoft has been filed in Italy by a group claiming that it's too difficult to per, uh, procure a refund for the copies of Windows that come bundled in new PCs. A spokesperson for Microsoft has responded by saying customers who purchase a PC from an OEM uh, with Windows pre-installed and then wish to return the PC and or the pre-installed software should consult the OEM's return refund policies. This of course comes across as a complete cop-out as Microsoft works hard to ensure theirs is the only operating system which comes pre-installed from these manufacturers. The class action suit seeks a hearing and also to nullify um, the section of Microsoft's end user license agreement that requires users to go to OEMs instead of Microsoft for refunds, which often proves very difficult, even if possible. Uh, Canadian opposition parties are taking a stand against internet metering after industry minister Tony Clement signaled he is probing a CRTC decision expected to raise the cost of using the web. The Liberals and New Democrats are both pledging to overturn the telecom regulators' usage-based billing ruling, which effectively kills unlimited internet usage plans. NDP digital affairs critic uh, Charlie Angus said big media companies, cable TV giants, or telecom providers have a conflict of interest in selling internet access. That's because Canadian consumers are increasingly turning to web-based TV and movie offerings such as the video streaming service Netflix, which rapidly eats up consumers' internet usage quotas. 
In an interview Monday, Mr. Clement acknowledged the strong reaction to the CRTC ruling and said he is hearing from people that they are worried that this will stifle innovation because the cost of using the internet services will quickly become prohibitively high in Canada. You can get the full stories at category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions from Gadget Wisdom Guru, Becca Ferguson, and our wonderful community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, send us an email at newsroom at category5.tv. From the category5.tv newsroom, I'm Hillary Rumble. Thanks, Hillary. No What's with the smirk at the end every time you every time you do the news? <laughs> because Robbie writes secret messages <laughs> in my thing. On your teleprompter. On my teleprompter <laughs> that I can't say because then I just sound funny, but they're funny to me, so that's why. Inside jokes. Come on, <laughs> share studio, just a little bit know. with us. Well, okay, this one says, I'm Hillary Rumble, a.k.a. Rock and Roll Daydreamer. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I like just it. Just a thrower. Just a thrower. It does throw like throwing me. in the word jackaloop, <laughs> for example. Uh, <laughs> it works. True. Yeah. <laughs> we got the letter from our ISP that said, by the way, come you know end of the month, we're going to jack up your pricing based on your usage. Oh, my. I'll tell you the truth. We stay with our ISP because it's unlimited bandwidth. So what's to keep us from finding yeah. a different ISP? that is competitively priced, that has better service or faster service, I should say, because there are, you know, the fiber optic options out there. We're stuck with DSL, it's unlimited bandwidth. If so all, all you ISPs out there want to send a pitch. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. Everybody, uh, yeah, get your quotes out to us, because uh, we, uh, we use a lot of bandwidth. But that's a scary thing. Yeah. I mean, for the end, you know, end user or consumer, what is it if you check your email and you know most people that are just using the internet for for typical purposes but when you broadcast a, a show every tuesday night and then you upload it and then, then you then upload you, the rss feeds yeah. and you up uh, you know just this massive amount of data being transferred all the time kind of scary stuff so hopefully they'll be able to do something about it i think that would be good this episode of category 5 tv is brought to you in part by pogo plug available at pogoplug.com and Planet Calypso, you'll find out more at cat5.tv slash Calypso. So there. And there you have it. There you have it. In case you wondered, this is episode 176. 176. Here in Canada, we have lots of problems with the internet. <laughs> They're bumping up our prices, and I had a customer who said, why is it that the person who registered my domain for me put their information or put private information on my registration as opposed to putting my personal information. I want my name to be on my domain. Makes sense. We have a beautiful company here in Canada that sends out these very official looking letters. Very official looking. Yes. Looking. If you're in Canada and you own a domain and your name is on it, you may have seen these. You may see these. It says Domain Registry of Canada. It's got a maple Maybe leaf. Maybe you could just... Yeah, just kind of zoom in on that for me, just so you can see the logo. It looks very official. Domain Registry of Canada. There you go. Everybody spam their P.O. box. Let's open this up. So this... Whoa, John! <laughs> Extreme close up. <laughs> this is action pack. There we go. Hey, give him a break. It's only like the second week with the new okay. camera. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can't, I can't speed it up. <laughs> it's not okay, so they've got a return shipping envelope, okay, that goes right back. Looks very official, like I said. It looks very governmental. This is the Domain Registry of Canada, and has the Canadian flag, and a very official-looking letter with a bunch of check boxes that say, "As a courtesy to domain name holders, we're sending you this notification of the domain registration that is due to expire in the next few months." Oh, okay. I own a domain. Yeah. Oh, they know all my information. It's on here. So, check off the box that you want. Okay. Oh, wow, I can get two years for 70 bucks. What a great deal. Check that off. Yes, indeed. Guess what happens if you check that off? Well, you know what? I, I, I will say, if you read the, all the way through, they do actually point out, do you give point? us permission to take it from whoever you registered it with? Right. But nobody reads that and actually understands it until after the fact. Um, I had a situation with some folks very dear 
to me. Mm. And but I will say, I got on the phone and I I started out polite, then I blew a gasket, mm. and I got their money back. You'll get their, you may get their <laughs> money back, but will you get their domain back? That's the risk. Well, it is still actually. I do believe. I could be wrong. I, I think it is actually still registered, but it's just like another company. It could right. be like uh, Robbie's sneaky, registry sneaky, saying, "Okay, sneaky. well, these people have to renew and right. steal in all of you know John's business." So what they do is they go on and they've they've got bots that get the information about all the people who register domains in Canada, and then they send out these very official letters, and they look extremely official, and allow you to enter your credit card and sign it and send it back. So watch out for that. That's the, the Domain Registry of Canada. They have forever been on the watch list for uh, scams and um, Better Business Bureau is not too pleased with them and things like that. So make sure you just take that and shred it. Read the darn thing through. and Don't even. Don't yeah, even. Okay, as yeah, soon as you well, see that, that Domain Registry you know, of Canada, now that you know, shred that. That's all you want to do. A lot of fans says that should be illegal. but uh, Should be illegal. Absolutely. But. It's uh, it's a form of. It's a of, fine line. The way it's, it's very, worded in there. That's the tricky thing. Yes, indeed. But it, they prowl. They're prowling on people who don't know any better. So if you own a domain and you're maybe somebody registered it on your behalf, or maybe you bought it, you've got a yeah. .com or. It, shows a, it looks like a government agency. It really does. It's not a government agency. <laughs> no, sir. No. It but the government has tried to shut them down a couple times. Yes, but the they're, they're walking that fine line, so mm -hmm. they're, they're somewhere... The spirit of the thing is not right, but <laughs> <laughs> the legality of it is, is, is still, uh, you know, they haven't determined that they can actually do much about it. Mm. This is Category 5 Technology TV at www.category5.tv. We'd love to have you register on our website, and if you do, you're going to have a chance to win a copy of Wirecast, the software that we use to broadcast this show. If you'd like to do video broadcasting on the internet, this is your chance to get a free copy of the software worth $449. So stick around, we're going to be talking about that at the end of the show. In the meantime, blogging. That's short for web blog, you new folks. Sorry. It really isn't anymore, though, is isn't it? it? It just seems to be it's a whole new blog. word. It's, it's a word. It's, it's a word. Own word. Yeah, it's its Verb own word. Verb and noun. Yeah. So, you recently had an experience with WordPress. Yeah, I uh, downloaded the software, did yeah. the install. I mean, the, the big part of figuring out what to do is, you know, well, geez, what directory? Should I dump everything? And, In and, that and, instance and, yeah. where you want to install yeah. it. Yeah, and geez, it was actually pretty pretty darn easy, pretty slick. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and that was the first time I'd actually used that particular thing. So it was sure. um, very... Uh, very intuitive once you get to get rolling with it. Definitely. And the instructions are very explicit. If you, if you head over to newsroom.category5.tv, you'll see our, our newsroom website, which looks like any other news site. It's got news stories. It's got a calendar that you can go back in time with you know, when the stories were. It's got uh, topic cloud here as well so that you can click on a specific topic and find out more information about it. All these things are powered by WordPress. Now, in our case, and in the case of uh, Eric's uh, setup as well, you've got a server that you wanted mm -hmm. to install it on, and, and it's, it's a server that you already have, and, and so on. But for the end user who doesn't have a web hosting server, there's an opportunity for you to get this software called WordPress without having to install it. Um, if you'd like to, if you have a server and you'd like to check it out, go to WordPress.net, WordPress.org. Pardon me, WordPress.net will take you there. WordPress.org will allow you to download the latest right. version of WordPress, and that will allow you to install that on your server. And as Eric was saying, it's it's really quite easy to do that and works really well. But you need a home. You I have mean, to you have your own server to do to that. Work. Yeah. But for those of you who don't have that, that's that's who I'm talking to tonight. We're going to go instead of the .org or .net. We're going to go to WordPress.com. And at WordPress.com, rather than downloading the software and installing it yourself, this is a service provided by the makers of WordPress that allows you to simply express yourself, start a blog. Make sure you have something to say first. Oh, sorry, did I say that out loud? <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to him. You okay, can get okay, okay. You can get started. It's okay. It's okay. It's a few uh, simple steps. 
to get started with your blog. Hillary's going to start one called Spilling the Beans or something. Isn't it? Spilling the Cool Beans. Spilling <laughs> the Cool Beans. <laughs> I could Actually, work. we should register that right quick. <laughs> really quick. <laughs> dot com. Dot com. <laughs> Okay, so over here at WordPress.com, I'm going to click on Sign Up Now. And right here, my blog address. Spilling the cool beans. Let's do it for real. Can't use an apostrophe. apostrophe. Can't use an apostrophe. The cool beans. And is it available? It is. Of course. Imagine that. (laughs) <laughs> Spilling the cool beans.com is also available. Hillary, you want to pay 17 bucks a year? Fantastic. It's there if we ever decide. Username. Hmm. Password. We'll just make something up here. Hillary Beans or something? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Enter your email address and then sign up. Here we go. Check your email to complete your registration. And then it's really, really simple to get this thing going. It really, 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 really is. Really simple. So I'm going to log into my email here just to get that registration email, and you'll see how quickly, you know, even with only a few minutes left of the show, we're able to get our blog up and running. So with a blog, you're going to be able to become that writer that you've wanted to be. You're going to be able to inform Please your family, sure you inform your friends. To say. Not necessarily. No. <laughs> it's an opportunity as okay. well to just use it as a diary, use it as okay. a journal, use it as a as a way to communicate with your family and friends about what's going on in your life. Okay. Right? Connect it to Twitter, and all of a sudden your tweets are going out as well. It's great. Okay, I've got uh, an email here already. WordPress.com. Activate. Spilling the cool beans. Thank you for signing up. With WordPress.com. I want credit for picking that name. You can have the domain if Hillary will let you. <laughs> you can have it. You can spill your link. own cool beans. I am going to be. I'm okay with that. All right, my account is now active. Username, oh. spilling the cool beans. Password, a whole bunch of stars. Okay. Starring. So let's log in for the first time. Here we go. Okay, on Spilling second thought, that's a heck of a name to have cool. to put in all the You'll never forget <laughs> it. There we go. Let's see what happens. Waiting. And we are in all right. oh, yeah. already in that amount of time. I have a great idea for our first, uh, first blog uh, message. Wonderful. But here, we've already got our WordPress blog set up and running. So now, if anybody goes to spillinthecoolbeans.wordpress.com, you're going to actually get our Spill in the Cool Beans blog. There's nothing there yet. It's just a hello, welcome to WordPress. But let's actually get this thing started and say, okay, let's create our first blog entry. Now, with WordPress, there, there's so much that you can do. Play around with the settings. Check out some of the options that are available in, in th- going through the menu items. But right out of the box, you're able to start posting. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down here. We're going to go to Posts on the left-hand side there. And then up at the top, you've got Add New. So to get started, give your post a title. There you go. What is it? Beans, beans are good for the heart. (laughs) The more you eat, we could probably leave it there. There. There's our title for... I like it. Um, no, no, that should be Cool Beans. Beans oh, are right. good for the heart, yeah. Okay. There, Cool Beans are good for the heart. There you go. Okay. <laughs> I like that. So, <laughs> you, can, you can post your, your entry there, and it's that simple. Okay. Now, with the regular version, the one you download and install... Yeah. You can um, add a picture with your. Uh, oh, you can entries. you can do can, all that. Can oh we yeah. Upload a picture with yeah, this one. Yeah, absolutely. Too? Upload insert that first button right there Great. is add an image, and you're going to be able to do that if you like. And and it'll allow you to pick large, medium, small, and it'll do oh, yeah. the sizing for you yeah. and everything. It's actually quite. Uh, it's very intuitive. It's quite easy to use. Very easy to use. So once I'm done, ready to publish. Now you can publish it immediately, or you can schedule it as well. In this case, I'm going to publish because that, we're going to pretend, is our first blog entry. Back at Spilling the Cool Beans, you'll notice that instantly my blog entry is already up. There's no having to wait for 
web guys to update cool. your website for you. No. Or whatever else. And, and of course, you can change the uh, the the image there. You can change the link to home, and you can change about, and you can change the little. Let's do it. Italicized thing up in the corner. Back at our administrative panel here, we're going to go to appearance, and you'll see that uh, we've got our current theme there. But there are tons of different themes to choose from. Any legumes? Well, <laughs> that's, that's the thing. Who knows? <laughs> so you can scroll through and find one. You can do a search. You can, you know, however you want to do it. Let's see if beans come up in a search. Oh, unfortunately, they do not. Oh. That is just perplexing. I'm surprised. <laughs> but you can upload pictures, images. Oh, from absolutely, your own, yeah. Uh, but let's let's just wreck. say that this is the design that we like. Coraline. All right. Let's All right. just say that's the case. We're going to activate that one. All right. And if all went well, there we go. There we now, go. spilling the cool beans looks like that design template that we uh, that we chose. Of course, not getting too heavy into the settings of uh, but there, there setting are up myriad settings. Oh, with which you can play. Um, you can put things in categories, so you can have, you know, you pintos, different tags, you can categories. have lima, you can have uh, whatever kind of... All the different kinds of beans. All the different kinds of beans. So there's a couple of features that I love to have installed on my WordPress website or blog. In my case, because we're using it for the newsroom, one of the key things is making sure that Twitter gets notified uh, when updates have been posted on my blog. Um, so let's see what I'm using there and you've got add to any allows people to send things uh, what you can do is in your plugin section you can actually go and add a new plugin and you'll find that there there are a ton of different plugins that you can add to your system for example let's search for Twitter do a search for the, that plugin, and you can scroll through, and you see the stars to see how many, you know, who, what people think of this particular plugin, because there may be 200 different types of Twitter apps to install right. on your WordPress blog. Yeah, a couple of different, four and a half. Yeah, and if you like, you know, read the description, and if one of them suits you, install now, and it's going to actually pop that into your WordPress blog, boom, just like that, and no having to figure out how to install. Uh, extensions onto your your website or anything like that it's all completely automated the installation process is automated but then also as updates are released you'll see here I've got some updates just that I've left as an example and you see how plugins says eight that means that there are eight plugins that currently are awaiting an update and I can see that upgrades available are eight and I can just follow through with that update process and it's going to actually do all that for me I don't have to do any of the you know, downloading zip files and unzipping them and installing PHP programs and doing all that. Nice and you simple. You almost have to do zip. Sorry, that was bad. That was terrible. WordPress.com if you want to start your own blog free without having to sign up for hosting anywhere else or pay for hosting, having to get your own dot coms or anything, you can just get, uh, you know, spilling the cool beans dot WordPress.com. Or if you want to brand it yourself and put it on your own server and set it up completely yourself, it's wordpress.org. Check that out. And uh, we'll have links in the show notes for episode number 176 as well. Almost out of time. Everybody Word. go there. Spill in the, spill in the cool beans wordpress.com. Pardon me. This could be the latest phenomenon and trend. Like, it could be a huge thing, spilling the cool beans. Like, everyone could be on it and, like, creeping it and lurking it and see all the awesome things that are posted. This could go viral. Oh. Hmm. So to speak. Hmm. And let's see, that password was about eight asterisks, as I recall, from <laughs> seeing it on the screen there. So Okay, <laughs> you've got it hacked. Perfect. Hacker. <laughs> this is your first post. Edit or delete it and start blogging. There you, there go. you go. Okay. So you saw Wirecast on episode number 175. <laughs> if you haven't caught that episode, make sure you do check it out. Wirecast is a fantastic broadcasting software for video broadcasting on the internet. It's what we use to switch our cameras around if we want to uh, do our lower thirds like this, switching over to the computer screen 
switching over to Hillary and, and so on and so forth, that's all powered by Wirecast. Everything like that. It has green screening and, and some really advanced uh, high-end features that you would see in you know, big studio uh, production suites, chroma key and things. Um, so we're going to be giving away one of those licenses for Wirecast over the next uh, few weeks. We're going to be taking some, uh, some essays from our viewers. And in order for you to get involved in that, uh, what you need to do is go to category5.tv. And when you're there, if you're not already registered, make sure you register, uh, create a free account on our website. You can do that by just going to the top here and going create an account. Otherwise, make sure you log in. Once you're logged in, uh, there is a page under support us that says advertise on category5.tv. If you go over that page while you're logged in, you're going to see that somewhere on that page is some information for you on how to win a copy of Wirecast. And again, Wirecast is $449 in its most basic uh, version. And, uh, 449 Canadian or US? That'd be US. Why does it I'm matter? Not, it probably doesn't. We're like either on Actually, par or beating them out, <coughs> usually, these days. Well, yes. Yeah. However. Anyway. However. Irrelevant. Okay. <laughs> yes, it's, it'll, it'll be free it's if really, you win it. It's free. 450 buck value. And it's a fantastic piece of software. And certainly, if you uh, if you're at all interested in uh, in doing video broadcasting on the internet, if you already do it and you want to get into some you know higher end software to make it happen, or if you uh, if I you, could start up my own cooking show. Let's think about your sports team, right? You do you do hockey. Well, you don't want to see be me cool. play hockey. You don't want to see me. On Wouldn't skates. it be cool if we could? No, it wouldn't be Live. cool if you could. The 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 mystery would be gone, and you'd say, he "Keeps going to play, but why doesn't he get any yeah. better?" You know, like, what, what's you, going on here? <laughs> so, After every show, every Tuesday night, I'm going to be like, you don't need to go. Yeah, no, no, just, no, really, the team would be happy if you didn't go, Eric. <laughs> I so, bring the water bottles. <laughs> so again, to reiterate, log into the website, category5.tv, register if you haven't already done so, but once you're logged in, go to the uh, Advertise on Category 5 TV page, and you'll find out all about how you can win a copy of Wirecast. But sports teams... Uh, churches, we mentioned that on the yeah. show last week. It's like it's a fantastic opportunity to broadcast your sermons live, and uh, anything else that you can think of. They were mentioning about using it for business, and can it so be used to uh, record in that cast? And then yeah, as opposed to it's what we use to record. Okay. Yeah, oh yeah, you you could okay. do it just a recording, but it's designed for live broadcasting. Okay, Ed Will was wondering, so I thought I'd yeah. ask that. Yeah, sure you could. You could set up Wirecast to just record to disc. That's fine. But there are some fantastic features that are designed specifically for broadcasting live. To give you an example of where it could be used um, to record, remember when we did the Halloween episode and I was chroma keyed into the, onto the bridge of the Starship Enterprise? That was pre-recorded, but it was done using Wirecast so that I could utilize the, the live chroma key features. I could have done the chroma key afterwards, but then what if I was sitting in the wrong spot or what if the angles didn't look right with Wirecast because it was live I could actually see that it, it, I looked like you know it was working out so boy I could smell the geek on that show but actually you know what smelled worse was I'd actually wore the real hockey equipment that I wear and <laughs> <laughs> oh man and he has a very small washing machine if that means anything to you <laughs> so it had been a while the uh, the <gasps> we, we had cockroaches and they're all dead we now. should move on yeah okay <laughs> Hillary, it's been really nice having you here. Thanks for making the Thank trip tonight. Thank you. I love being here. So anytime I, like I can, I think you, I'm here. You yes. live here again if the snow really hits. Yeah. <laughs> um, hopefully Snowmageddon round two, or as I recently heard via the Twitter machine, <coughs> Notorious B.I.G. Get it? Do you guys get it? No one? Cricket, cricket? Oh, man. I just hope it's not like killer snow because I'm just ready for spring and I may be trapped here forever. We'll see how that goes. Oh, well, eh? Did she say Snowmageddon? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, that one, that's kind of, that's what we're in the middle of, people. Okay. That's what they say. So stay warm. I'm going to have to do some shoveling in the morning, get up a little extra early to get rid of all the snow that's coming down. That's something I'm really good at, that getting up early thing. Yeah? Not really a morning person. No? Not really even a person in the morning. <laughs> but hey, <laughs> three in the morning, I am right there for you. <laughs> Thanks for being with us this week on Category 5 TV. Do check out our website, category5.tv. And 
Who knows? Something may be happening at spillingthecoolbeans.wordpress.com. Not too likely. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> but, you know, if you want to go there and check it out, I will. pretty neat. Yeah. I will. Eric and I can share it. Wouldn't that be funny? That would sure. be funny. <laughs> we'll all blog on uh, yeah, but spilling and the cool And John, beans. too. And, and we can get Christy and yeah. carry on. Just be like a community <laughs> effort. It'd be hilarious. Hilarious. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. I hope you had a great night tonight, and uh, I'm going to go and order myself a new HDMI cable from New York. Why not we'll from Ontario? Because I had to order it from the States, because the closest place was Toronto, and they couldn't take an American credit card. I use PayPal. Wow. I know. Unbelievable. Okay. Well, there you have it. There you have it. <laughs> B&H is great anyways in New York. So, anyways. All right. I just wondered. <laughs> take care. We'll see you. Try not to bye, miss bye, us too bye much. Bye, 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 everyone. <laughs>